Hi, I'm Dave. Uh, I do a lot of PCB design work and we get these PCBs through uh, every day of the week after a lot of uh, hard work and we always get a number of questions from the design engineers and they always say, why is there so much green space on the board? You look at this and it's full of green, there's uh, no components in the spaces. Why can't we get more components on there? This is what they're driving. They're trying to get more uh, functionality on these boards. Uh, and they're trying to reduce the cost. We make very um, secure uh, products that have to go in uh, small spaces. So we need things as small as possible. How much room do they want? So when I tell them there's a reason for these spaces, we don't just do this you know, for no reason. We do this to help our assemblers. But it's, the question is, well, how much room do they want? And the final question is, when I tell them we're working to rules, well, can't we just break the rules? So what we looked at was how relevant are these rule sets that we've got? And these go back 15 years. So the placement rules around these devices that are fixed shapes, effectively, there's fixed rectangles around these, these different devices that say how close something else can come. Uh, they go back 15 years, so they're very conservative. So they work, they're fine. We looked at that and we talked to our assemblers and, and they said, oh, you can come a lot less than that. You can come down by a factor of five. So we thought, great, brilliant, we'll do that. So we looked at what we had in our library with these fixed shapes, all version controlled, and thought, we're going to have to change 400 parts in a library. <laughs> That's going to take a long time. We don't want to do that. Not, not just once and then have to do it again. So. We looked at alternative technologies that were around and within the Cadence tool there was what's called RTDFA, which is Real-Time Design for Assembly. That allows us to effectively put a shape on this component, which is pretty much the same size as the component, and then with a, a grid matrix system say, right, I've got this device and this device, I want to impose a gap of 0.1 of a millimetre, but from this device to this device I want a different gap. So we had the flexibility then to change the rules uh, as and when we wanted. So we could introduce rules for different assemblers. We could introduce rules for different types of board. So some good examples, we had a board that was very small and con uh, constrained, as I said. We wanted to get as much on as possible. So we brought the rules right the way down to point one, implemented the rule set and uh, worked perfectly. There was another board, we had a lot more, um, there was a lot more constraints going on, electrical constraints, so we need a bit more space around stuff. Mm -hmm. So rather than going to point one, which allows developers to do uh, the wrong things, we said, right, we're going to make that point two five. So we came back a little bit, but we had the flexibility, without having to change our entire library, to make that change in the rules. And the final one was uh, an RF board where we needed a uh, few components to be very close to each other, butted end to end for functionality uh, and work to work properly. Um, and we, that allowed us to come really narrow on, uh, for those components, but for the rest of the board, make it quite wide and easy to assemble. So at the end of the day, we came up with a lot of a good compromise for that type of board. So all in all, RTDFA was the solution we wanted. Uh, and we've implemented it now. It's working successfully across our boards. Uh, and if anyone wants any information, just go to the Cadence website.